Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Bobby. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. All right. So a couple of questions. I kind of wanted to start off um, with what you are an expert at. So what tips do you have for people that are coming into the industry that are really wanting to grow their platform? So starting out, maybe they don't have their books um, completely full or where they want them to be at. Where do you start with somebody that's kind of new in the industry? Okay. That's a great question. And honestly, I use the analogy of like working out a a lot in this scenario to answer this kind of question. And a lot of it is you just got to show up and start. And when I work with students, when we work with professionals and we get into what is really stopping them from utilizing social media to grow their business, a lot of it is they're just overwhelmed. Like they're overthinking it. They're thinking too big. They're comparing themselves to like these beauty influencers and they're just telling themselves like, I'm never going to be that person. It's going to take so much work. I just, I don't even know where to start. And I think that that's the biggest fallacy of, of, you know, utilizing these social media tools is honestly, like you don't have to be an influencer to be able to fill your book of business, to book your appointments using these platforms. What it really takes is like understanding that it matters, having an idea of who you are and why you do what you do, and then just showing up and being out there. And so um, one of the things that I tell people when I hear this from them is like, look, I have spoken to salon professionals who have less than a thousand followers on Instagram who make six figures a year and who are absolutely stoked on their social media marketing because they have the right followers and they have done it the right way that works for them and pays the dividends that they need. And, you know, again, they're not looking at people who have 50,000 followers or getting caught in this trap of like, but I don't know how to film a video or I don't know how to post. They're literally just showing up every day and putting in the work. And I think that that's like the biggest thing I like to start with, with students or professionals when they're jumping in and they want to get serious about this is like, just commit to yourself that you're going to do this, that you're going to show up, that you're going to make time for this and that it will um, pay off in the long run for you. I think it can definitely be intimidating. I think one of the things for students, um, at least in kind of like what I've seen, I know it's hard to like want to put your work out there right away because what they're seeing every day on TikTok is obviously somebody that is is way more advanced in their career than them, right? So I think it's so important to just start. Now with starting, um, once you have, um, let's say you start your Instagram account or your TikTok or whatever it is, whatever platform you're on or all platforms, which I'm sure is probably what you recommend to do. Is that right? Do you kind of recommend doing a little bit of everything or do you kind of stick to a certain platform? Um, I always say like plant your flag somewhere, but be flexible because so I've been around long enough to see the transition from, you know, Facebook to Instagram and now to TikTok. Right. And the thing that is happening that we've noticed is the time it took from people to migrate from Facebook to Instagram is um, was way longer than the time it's taking from people to migrate from Instagram to TikTok. And so, and, and I don't think TikTok will likely be the last iteration of a new social platform that we'll see. So I think that you should be aware of this. I think you should um, sort of plant your flag in terms of like, this is where I'm going to spend my time. But I do think you should make sure that that content can be put on other platforms, whether that's TikTok or YouTube or even Facebook still. Like I, I still know a lot of salon professionals who are like, for my target demographic, those women that are older have cash and are going to religiously see me um, every four weeks. Facebook is a gold mine for me. So. Yeah. So I love that. So it is kind of a where you're comfortable and where your clients are. I think um, kind of right now, I think everyone's doing a little bit of everything. I think that there are people that are just more comfortable using certain things. So I love that. But so if somebody is starting um, and I know what we have them do traditionally as beauty school students is we have them start their um, Instagram while they're in school. I think it's what they do their first week, to be honest. Um, and they so they they start their, profage- their professional pages 
Do you recommend keeping um, the looks up from where you started um, once you are in a salon? Or do you recommend like taking down the work that was maybe like your beginning work that we can just say is not maybe your best at this point? What do you recommend for that? Um, look, I mean, I think one of the things that people really like about social media is authenticity. I think they like being able to have that kind of reality TV show where you get to follow along on someone's journey, or you can really like scroll back and see what was happening before. This is why I agree. Like, I think starting your social media in school makes sense because this is where you're starting your professional journey. And I think it gives people credibility when they can show progress and that they've invested in themselves to get an education, to go about this the right way, you know, to put in the work. Um, You know, I I don't think there's anything wrong with like going back and saying, Hey, I'm going to scrub some of this stuff that I just don't want out there. I, I think you always have that right. And you always have that freedom to do that. But I also don't think you should ever be ashamed of who you are, where you started. And again, don't underestimate that that makes you feel human to somebody. And that gives them a reason to emotionally connect to you when they feel like they've got, you know, they're rooting for the underdog or they're like, wow, this girl like really put in the time and it's amazing to see how far she's come. And now I want to support her. So, um, you know, that's kind of my take on it is like, I've definitely seen people sort of torch everything and start from ground one, from ground zero. And again, whether you do that after school, whether you do that when you get to like a certain salon and you're like, oh, I just don't want people to see this other part of my life. That's totally your prerogative. But I would just say like, don't underestimate um the feeling of the truth, the feeling of your real journey and who you are and why you're doing what you're doing and what past photos can tell you. And honestly, the more that you're posting and the longer that you're in the industry, it's going to take someone a heck of a long time sometimes to scroll all the way back. But you as a person might really enjoy having a documentation of that journey as well. Yeah. I think that it's good to have that. I think it's good to be like, oh my gosh, this was my first balayage and look at where I'm at now. I think it's exciting. I mean, I, I like that. Um, and I like that the students have that option as well to go back. Now, how much do you think there needs to be like a personal, um, that there needs to be personal information on that or personal posts? Mm -hmm. Um, it, I know that there's not like a specific, like 10% of your posts or whatever, but how much do you need to share about yourself on your professional page or how much needs to be separated? Yeah. I mean, look again, I think that being willing to talk about things, whether it's your love of your dog or, you know, maybe your hobbies and the things that you do outside of beauty and your life and where you're at. um, Again, I think those things make you human. Uh, In the Beauty is a Business course, what we really focus on is like, what is your personal brand? So who are you? What do you value? What do you stand for? And that needs to shine through. And that gives the personal touch to what can be a very professional looking page. Um, But I do recommend like, again, we're humans. The point of social media is we want to connect with other humans. Um, one of the things that we say in marketing is like people connect with people, not with brands. So even though you need to understand your personal brand, you need to have, um, sort of uniformity and consistency in your branding. Again, that human side is what people are going to remember and what they're going to connect with. So we always like encourage anyone who goes through our courses to think about who are you more than like just a super passionate beauty lover, because we know that. And we know that a lot of the other professionals out there are going to share that. But what, what intersections do you have that make you feel really unique and allow you to attract a certain type of client or a certain person who, who's going to resonate and relate to you as a person, not just as a professional? Yeah. So on that topic, what are some things that you see people doing wrong on their social media? What are like, I'm sure that you have seen some things. I know that we all have, we kind of see posts and like, Oh, don't do that. Um, But what are like the top things that you see people doing wrong in this industry? 
Yeah. I mean, the first thing I'm going to start with is the biggest thing that I see students especially getting wrong. And, and I see this more and more with every generation that comes into beauty school is they assume that because they have grown up with social media, that they understand how to utilize it strategically, not just as a consumer. And I will make the argument that even though a lot of people feel comfortable on these platforms because they consume content from these platforms, um, not everyone has done the work of thinking deeply and strategically about utilizing these platforms as tools. And that's the biggest gap that I see when somebody says, look, I'm posting pictures, I'm making content, I feel like I'm doing everything that I see this other person doing. Why isn't this working for me? And the biggest thing that I see is like your your content, your, what you're doing feels a little bit shallow and it feels a little bit hollow because what you're not understanding is the reason why this is working for the person over here is again, they've thought about their personal brand. They've thought about the story that they're telling, like they are doing marketing they're not just posting. And so one of the things that I think you can't underestimate is like, yes, like I said, show up. You can't, you're going to get, you know, zero followers if you're not even out there posting or doing stuff consistently. But also I, I think there's a lot of like benefit to knowing who you are and what you're about because consciously or subconsciously, that is going to come through in your content and people love content that feels deep, like feels like it has some depth. And so I have even seen, you know, some pages where it's a wall of hair. Okay. And, and maybe at first somebody's like, okay, this person is not doing very dynamic content. It, it just looks like a wall of hair on their, on their Instagram profile, but they have a good following. They have an engaged community. And the difference that I see with, you know, one person doing a wall of hair photos and having nothing happen and another person kind of doing the same thing, but having engaged followers is again, somebody is missing that this person has done the work to build a community, to tell a story, to create a brand, and their followers are reacting to something that they expect rather than, you know, somebody else who's like, well, I posted this and nothing happened. And it's like, well, what have you done to build the credibility, to build the story and to set the expectation of what you want to have happen when you post? Yeah. Wow. That's so important. And that's so much like, I feel like that's exactly, I didn't, that's exactly what I feel like you're just spot on. And, and I think that's what a lot of people are missing. I think that there's this idea and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but, or if this is truly how it is, but I know I've heard a lot of people say like, if this is the thing that people are reacting to, you keep doing that. But I think kind of what you're saying is like, there's got to be a balance there of like building that credibility and not just like robot same post after same post um, and really adding more. So I think that that's such an important message. And I think that that's super helpful. Yeah, because again, I think that that's the place where I see the most frustration mm -hmm. with people is they feel like they're doing everything that they see someone else is doing and they just don't understand why they're not getting the same results. And at the end of the day, what it comes down to is somebody who, for whom social media is working in the way that it should has probably done the work of, again, figuring out what story they're telling, what their community is about, what they're trying to do to add value to people's lives rather than just saying like, Hey, clearly I'm a beauty professional and you should come see me for my services. Like, what is this other person doing that makes people feel like I enjoy following them? I enjoy seeing their content. I feel like it adds value to my life more than just knowing I could go get a haircut or get my hair colored from this person. Yeah. Well, I love that. Thank you so much for those tips. That was, like I said, that's extremely helpful. So let's say that we follow everything that you said. We've done the BDS and business class and now we've gone viral. Um, we have the followers we want. We have the engagement we want. How do we as um, beauty professionals 
turn that into helping like our long lasting career because we can be famous on Instagram and TikTok um, and have all those followers. But is that who is coming to see us? Is that just like we have this following from different states now? How do we convert that into actual dollars in our pocket successful career? Yeah. And this again is where I think is kind of the biggest fallacy of social media and where I see students feeling very overwhelmed. I think some students are very invigorated by this, but I think there's a lot of students out there who feel very overwhelmed thinking about this going into school. And kind of what I joke about is like beauty is a business. The courses and the curriculum we teach are about foundational strategy and personal branding because these social media platforms are going to change. They change frequently. And and again, you could go from Instagram to TikTok, but there are certain um, fundamental principles that are like true in marketing, not that that matter regardless of what platform you're on. And so I think that one of the things that we also encourage students to think about, like you said, is what is the long-term goal here? What are we actually trying to do? And I think that when I talk to students and they're like, okay, well, I feel like I've got to get to 10,000 followers or 20,000 followers. Um, What I love to remind them of is like, if you are looking to attract customers within a local radius, again, I will make the argument that it is better to have 500 followers who are really going to be able to drive to you, show up and pay you money than it will be to put in the effort and energy to get 10,000 followers who cannot do that. Unless, unless you are thinking about building a product line. Mm -hmm. Um, so people can spend dollars nationally through like the e-commerce realm. Um, if you're thinking about doing the influencer route, which I know is like a real thing for a lot of students, they want to go that route. And then the other place where I also will make the argument that comes into play and can be really advantageous is if you want to work for a big brand, Um, marketing is a lucrative career path and beauty marketing is a lucrative career path. If you can demonstrate that you understand and know how to utilize marketing principles, um, you can go work for some really big players in the beauty industry. So again, I think it's about your goals. You know, if your goals are like, I want to be in this area and make six figures and have a great book of clients and see them consistently. Again, the way that you're building your social media should be really focused on, I don't need thousands of followers from across the United States. I want to focus on how do I make sure people in my area know who I am, what I'm about, and how can I get referrals from family, friends, and grow this community through word of mouth. You know, so... And, and look, your, your career path may evolve over time. And again, there's no reason why you can't say, oh my goodness, I've been focused on building a local following for so long, but now I want to go this other path. Okay, cool. Do it. Like you can, there, you don't have to worry about like boxing yourself in and being afraid that that's going to prevent you from doing something else in the future. We're going to take a quick break from the podcast to hear a word from our sponsors. Today's sponsor for this episode is LEAD. LEAD is the first degree designed with beauty professionals in mind. To create future professionals and leaders for this fast-growing industry, Rolfs has partnered with L'Oreal, Arizona State University, and Mesa Community College and is proud to launch the first ever college and university degree designed specifically with beauty professionals. It's time to acknowledge the level of impact beauty professionals have in our lives. Every year, an individual consults with a beauty professional over 48% more than a physician. This is why advancing the accredited education of beauty professionals is our mission. LEAD is shaping the future of beauty by developing the minds and expanding the intellect of beauty professionals who maintain and restore our self-expression and well-being. For more information, visit leadinstitute.degree today.
The folks at Access, L'Oreal's online destination for professional education, are ready to kick off the holidays. Because they love cosmetology students so much, they're launching a holiday promotion just for you. It's called Haul for the Holidays, and trust me, it's a haul like no other. And what's even better is that it couldn't be easier to participate. So here's how it works. Starting on November 1st, you will log into L'Oreal Access, complete the Haul for the Holidays learning plan, which has been curated just for students so they can learn about different L'Oreal professional hair care and color brands. And then you'll hop over to L'Oreal's Level Loyalty Reward site and enter to win the Ultimate Stylist Starter Kit. 100 students will win the holiday haul containing prizes like a mannequin head, a carbon comb, tint brushes, mixing bowls, super cute capes and aprons, towels, a ton of full-size L'Oreal products, and so much more. Then 10 lucky winners will get all of that plus enough level points to redeem for a nice set of shears or a Dyson hair dryer. Typically, you have to earn points on level by buying L'Oreal products, but with Haul for the Holidays promotion, you have the chance to get them for free. How insane is that? Students will have just until before the end of November to complete it. So make sure you're signed up for both L'Oreal Access and L'Oreal Level Loyalty Rewards program. More info is on its way, but go ahead and get excited. This is about to be a happy holiday indeed. Now let's get back to the episode. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of hairstylists that um, that will say, you know, one of the tips that they have for beauty school students is to not look at the people that just like blew up overnight um, and have this insane following because as far as the career goes, you know, you really need to like kind of just know that it's not going to happen so quickly. Um, you know, I think that sometimes there's this urgency or this rush. And I think that that's just the world that we live in now. Like we want everything immediately and we want the success to happen so quickly, but to kind of slow your roll a little bit and kind of take, take a step back. So I think that really echoes what you said about just like start it in beauty school, start there and let yourself, if in your career and your brand and all of that stuff may change, you know, over time and being okay with that just, and I think like, I think that this is something that I learned just because I'm like older now. Um, But I think that it really is a message of, you know, just understanding that paths change and being open to those things. Like you're not going to decide at 18 exactly what your life is going to look like for me at 35 at this point. Like this is not even, you know, anything that I would have imagined and, and that's okay. But to just start and to jump in, I think is the most important thing and just know that it's, it's not forever and things can change. And yes, you might gain that success by identifying what you want from it, I think is so important. And I love that you said to just start building your brand and identifying um, exactly what you want. I think that that's a really great message. So that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing those tips. Now I want to talk a little bit about you and I want to talk about beauty as a business. So um, I said before we started recording, I stalked you a little bit last night to get um, a little more information about you. And I really love your story of coming into this industry um, from journalism. Um, And so you had a background. I loved when I was reading that you had like a TV um, and like, you know, a journalist background. I was like, oh, she's gonna be a great interview. (laughs) This is, I think it is why you're so good. I mean, because I saw you, um, I guess we haven't told the audience yet, um, but I saw you on a conference through Milady. And when I was just so like, wow, Stephanie has it together. She really, you know, presents herself well, and your message came across perfectly. Um, And I think your background is such an important piece of that. So it is cool to see just as we're talking about paths changing, um, that it's not always like, oh, I did journalism and now I switched and oh my gosh, that was such a waste of time. Because I think had you not done that, even doing what we're doing today, you represent your brand and you represent what you're doing so well because of that. So tell me a little bit about how you came into this industry. Well, first of all, thank you so much. That is so kind. And it is really validating because Look, I'm I'm 34 now. I remember what it was like very vividly to be in my 20s and and early on in my career and and think like, okay, I have got this figured out and I know what I'm going to do and I know who I'm going to be and then life throws you a curveball and you start to like wonder, "Oh my gosh, is this going to end up okay? What should I do?" And so, yeah, I mean, um I am one of those classic stories of like, I knew who I wanted to be very, very young. So I was in high school when 9-11 happened. 
I really was like, look, journalism is so important. I want to be out there. I want to get the information to people. I want to tell stories. And that is what I like laser focused on all the way from my first year of high school to when I graduated college. And I already had a job with um, a local news station and I had interviewed in New York with some of the big news headquarters. I'd also lived abroad for a long time. So I had really good connections in the international world and um, life did just, it just didn't take me down that path. And there was definite, there were definitely days. Like I like to tell this story, Um, all my love to Gio, he's out there, but I have a, a person who I went through a program with, his name is Gio Benitez. And I see him all the time on Good Morning America. And Gio was my peer. And I'm like, that could have been me. That really could have been me, but that's not where life took me. And yes, there are days when it's hard and it's like, did I make the right choice? Should I have done this? Um, But yeah, I think that you've got to believe that everything that you're learning, every skill that you're gaining is helping you build momentum to do something that you're passionate about or that you're excited about. And so when I left journalism and I kind of headed off into the world of PR and marketing, honestly, it was because that's the route that a lot of journalists end up going is like, it's a natural transition to move into the world of business and to utilize those skills. And the way that a lot of businesses at the time were utilizing journalists were for content marketing and um, PR and things like that. And um, yeah, I did. I I found something that I really loved in marketing. And when I came to Oozel, and Oozel was really in the world of beauty school marketing, I did have a little bit of worry because I don't have a beauty background. And um, that can be very intimidating for me. There are still days when I go to conferences or I meet with a bunch of beauty school owners and everyone just looks so amazing, their hair, their makeup. (laughs) Like everything looks so great. And I just feel like it's so obvious that I don't have it together in that way. But I just. You fit here so perfectly, by the way. That's my story too. I, I'm i not in the, I'm not either. I went to college to be a high school English teacher. Um, so I have a similar story, but no, you fit perfectly. Like, I don't think there's any part of even in that conference, like I said, like you fit in this world. But I think that's what's amazing about this industry is it is so welcoming. I don't, but it really allows you to come into it in that way. Well, and what's really cool for me, especially, is the empowerment of women and women of color. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, my mom immigrated here from the Philippines. I have like a very deep love for the women who I know are out there hustling and trying to make it happen for their families and are literally focused on like, I am going to give my family a better life. Mm -hmm. And I have been so humbled by seeing how much the beauty industry allows that story to happen for women. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I look at the beauty industry, I feel very passionate about business. And again, I've experienced business through the channel of marketing and marketing makes people real money. And so I think that, you know, wherever you're at in life, um, whatever it is that you're doing, I do hold, I still hold to that belief that like, if you're good at what you're at, what you do, and if you're investing the time and the passion, like things are going to naturally happen for you and there's going to be a natural momentum. Um, and then again, when I look at the people I admire in the industry, the path that I tend to see happens is like, they start to also realize that there are business principles that they can leverage and put into place. Some of them, you know, do it without even realizing that they're doing it. And that's where the connection between passion and prosperity starts to happen for them. Mm -hmm. And so I just love, and I would really, really encourage students when you're in school, like, yes, learn the hard skills, be good at your craft, and also learn the business side, like learn the soft skills, learn the marketing skills, learn, you know, things about what it takes to run a PL for your business. Just 
things about money that are going to make your life easier and are going to allow you to feel like you've got a leg up on something or you're not as scared about something because you have that knowledge. Yeah, I really love that. I think that's awesome. Well, we're so lucky to have you in the industry. I think it's incredible that that we have you. So for Beauty as a Business, so this is a curriculum um, yeah. that you all have implemented um, into multiple schools at this point, correct? Or into, I'm yeah. sure, a lot of schools at this point. Yeah. Um, so talk to me a little bit about what Beauty as a Business is and kind of what um, what you all are doing with that. Okay. Thank you. I'm so excited. Beauty is a business is my baby. I love it. Um, so here is the short story of how this came to be. When uh, we, well, while working at Oozel and working with a lot of beauty schools across the nation, we were helping these beauty schools understand the power of online marketing. And these beauty school owners were like, hey, my students need to understand these principles because I want them to be successful um, after they graduate. And so we were flying to schools, doing like two, three day in-person workshops, going over everything with digital marketing, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Google, especially tips for like how to make photos and videos on your phone. Um, we got so many questions about like websites, always, always when I was in person with students, they were like, what should I do for my website? What do I need to understand? Um, really fun and engaging stuff, but being in person and traveling all the time can get expensive and really time consuming. And so, you know, luckily this happened a, a couple years before the pandemic, we were like, Hey, let's make a digital curriculum. Let's start it. Let's shoot it. You know, and that way schools can buy this and they can put every student through this curriculum. And really, when we were thinking about our goals for beauty as a business, here's here's the context that I will give for this curriculum. Um, Again, I think students, especially now, every every class that comes in are getting more and more comfortable with a world in which social media exists. Right. Like I think it's I always have one or two in a class that are like, hey, I don't use Instagram or I don't do this, you know, and so they're really starting from scratch. But for the most part, I would say we even skew now more towards people being like, hey, I started school with a decent following or I I feel like this is going to be part of my plan and I know what I'm doing. And so again, what I wanted to do is make sure that this curriculum was less about like, push this button and, you know, pull this lever. Um, I wanted it to be more about like, what is it about marketing? What is it about branding? What is it about these like fundamental principles that, that transcend time and platforms that we want students to be thinking about? And how do we switch that mindset from, again, being a consumer of social media to being a strategic tool user of social media. And again, it's not that I don't think students don't know what hashtags are, right? But I also think there are still to this day groups of students who I look at the hashtags that they're using and I'm like, I don't see a strategy here. Or I don't Mm -hmm. feel like, again, if you're trying to build like a local following that's going to pay you money, it feels like your hashtags are way too generic and way too broad. And so the curriculum takes people through Instagram. It takes them even through like things like contests and giveaways and the legality that you need to be aware of the legal rules you need to be aware of, depending on what state you're in. Um, Again, we have a whole section or a whole course on websites because Without fail, every time we went to a school, I ended up talking about websites and giving like a mini explainer of how websites work for at least 20 minutes to everyone. And then um, photography and video using your phone, because, you know, I've been around long enough that I remember when people were really like spending big money on cameras to try and get this like super high quality stuff. And now our phones are like pretty powerful and, and are a tool that we can use. And then um, the other one for me was Google. You know, this was the sort of underutilized platform for beauty professionals where a couple people had figured it out. But even to this day, when I go into a salon and we consult with professionals there, they are so heavy in the world of Instagram 
And very, very few are paying any attention to the power of Google. And so we wanted to make sure there was also some really good information in there for Google. So our goal with Beauty as a Business is that every beauty school student gets a foundational knowledge of branding and marketing principles across different platforms and different areas so that they can then take it to the next level or continue to like build on those principles as they go out into their career. And I'm really excited. Of course, like everyone's been kind of asking like, gosh, why, where's the TikTok course? Where's the TikTok course? The TikTok course is coming this summer. We're very excited. Um, I tell people, I said, you got to remember you got to remember the reason why there wasn't a TikTok course earlier is because frankly, not a lot of people were making money off of TikTok until recently. Like we had to wait for enough of a migration of people of all demographics going over from Instagram to TikTok to start making this really viable. Because again, I remember back in the day when Instagram was the newer platform and people were telling me, gosh, I'm spending a lot of time on Instagram and I'm getting no money from it. And I'm like, well, that's because anyone on Instagram right now is under the age of 30 and you're trying to get clients that have disposable income and, and honestly, like realistic expectations for hair and and what they're looking for. They're still on Facebook. You're going to have to wait a little bit for those folks to migrate over to Instagram. And so we're coming out with our TikTok course, you know, again, Um, We give lifetime access to any student for these courses because we want them to come back and revisit these courses at different points in their career and just refresh on the worksheets about branding, about hashtag strategy, things like that. So that's beauty as a business. Um, Yeah, we've had over 8,000 students at this point go through it, which is really exciting. Wow. And and yeah, we're working on a curriculum refresh that's going to be happening all through this year as well. So it's been really fun. That's so awesome. Do you have um, a space or a, a place that if you are listening to this as a beauty school student, or you're thinking about coming into the industry, a place where you can find which schools are offering this? Because I think um, mm-hmm. it's really cool to be able to say like, hey, I'm looking at beauty schools. And when you're deciding, um, for me, at least, again, knowing what I know, and I understand like a lot of people coming to this industry don't have all of the knowledge that we have and to see why this is important. But if you are listening, I think that there's going to be a bunch of people that are motivated by what you you've been saying today. And so is there a place to see where, what schools are offering this? That is a fantastic idea. We need to get that page up on our website. What I will say is if you go to beautyisabusiness.com, mm-hmm. there is a section for students, there is a section for school owners, and there is a section for professionals. Okay. So wherever you are, you know, you can jump in. If you're an owner, you can get more information about getting the curriculum. If awesome. You're a student, There's information on, again, how you can help your school access this or how you can get access and then professionals have a way to access it as well on their own. Awesome. Okay. So this is something that beauty professionals already can get. Okay. So I'm so sorry. I thought that this was just for, um, just in schools, this curriculum that just was in schools, but for beauty professionals as well, they can access this. That's awesome. Yeah. Now I will say, and, uh, again, we did build this specifically for students. So we have had feedback from professionals that are like, you always refer to like school or students and I'm no longer there. And I just have to tell them, like, I know it's because that is our main audience is yeah. beauty school students. But again, there are principles, there are fundamental things, even the worksheets that are in there that are still going to translate no matter where you are in in your career. Awesome. I love that. I know that there's going to be major growth with this. And I think like you said, as I like that you have sectioned it off by kind of need and who you are in the industry, but I definitely can see you all, I'm sure going bigger, even with this at some point to be like, okay, this is specifically for this. I know it's a lot. How long have you all been um, how long has Beauty's a Business been um, a curriculum? I know you've been with Oozle for a while, but. Yeah. So um, I started with Oozle in 2015. So I've been in the beauty school marketing industry for, I think, seven years. I'm going on seven years now. Beauty is a business 
um, started, well, we started working on the curriculum in 2017, but we finished um, filming some of our videos in like 2018, and we've been working on courses since then. So we've been around, um, I like to say, really officially since like 2018. And then I think it was 2019 um, or late 2018 when we got into our first beauty schools, which was really, yeah, I love that. I mean, this is just something that I see obviously in the schools is such a need. I've learned so much from you today that I'm like, Oh, I need to do this or that. I think that there's definitely information. I like that you guys have that you're focusing on students that that is where you all are um, putting your energy and time. Cause like I said, I know you have so much to give. And I think that we're all lucky that you've, that you've been doing this for all of us. So I think that's great. So Thank you so much for being here today, Stephanie. And thank you um, for watching. Um, we cannot wait to catch up with you more and kind of follow what you're doing. Um, we will put links um, in the bio and links down below if you're listening to a podcast um, of where you can follow Beauty as a Business and where you can find them. Um, and definitely make sure that you're following along because I know that even by the time that this comes out, I'm sure that there's going to be um, even more that you have to offer us. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Bobby. I appreciate the time. <laughs> All right. Thank you.